let's take our Bibles this evening and go to the book of Mark, chapter 11. There you are, somehow my notes got put in a different book and chapter altogether. And I thought, I hope I don't have to do this from memory, because uh, I'll forget the stuff that I planned on saying, and then I'll have to make up stuff to fill in that time. And I don't know if that would go so well. Uh, I do have the general thought that I wanted to convey and, and communicate. We're going to start in Mark chapter 11. We're going to read one verse here. I'll pray and let you be seated. And then we're going to be moving over to the book of Matthew for the rest of the sermon. Mark 11, verse 24. Mark 11, verse 24. And let's read that out loud together. Ready? Therefore I say unto you, what things soever ye desire, when ye pray, believe that ye receive them, and ye shall have them. And let's pray. Oh, Heavenly Father, uh, we come to you as, as people with needs. And God, I have no way of knowing all the needs that are represented uh, here tonight. Nor would I have any way of knowing all the needs of, of those that will be watching later on uh, by way of YouTube and in the internet. And God, we thank you for that technology being available and for those who, who do tune in very faithfully and others from time to time. And, and uh, God, I pray that this will be a blessing and help to them. And since I have no way of knowing and no way of addressing those needs, I pray that you would, through the preaching of your word, through the speaking to their heart by your Holy Spirit, that they may be helped and we all may prosper and benefit uh, from spending time in your word and with you. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. I want to just restate, re read this verse again so it's fresh in our minds, and we'll turn to the book of Matthew chapter 7. In fact, you can be turning there now while I read this verse, uh, since I have a head start and have it bookmarked already. Therefore I say unto you, what things soever ye desire, when ye pray, believe that ye receive them, and ye shall have them. Now what a powerful promise this is, and, and somebody might come and say, I, uh, I desire to have one of those new mid-engine Corvettes. Now I don't know why you would desire that, but there are obviously there are some people that desire them, and because <coughs> I've seen them running around on the roads. Um, and, and you say, I, I desire that, and I ask God for it, and I don't have that. Uh, what's going on here? This doesn't seem, this verse doesn't seem to work. Let's go back, uh, as I said, Matthew chapter 7, and we're going to start in verse 7. Uh, <clears throat> Matthew chapter 7, verse 7, it says, Ask, and it shall be given you. Seek, and ye shall find. And I preached the whole sermon uh, I guess a few months ago now, uh, to be careful what you're looking for, because you will find it. And so be careful. If you're looking for something to be critical about, I guarantee you'll find it. If you're looking for fault in somebody, you will find it. The, the minute you start looking for fault in the preacher, you'll have ample opportunity to find that fault and, and imperfections. If you're looking to be helped in the preaching, then you'll find that. If you're looking for truth from the Bible, you'll find that. If you're looking for things to be nitpicky and critical about, oh, you'll find that too. If you're looking for things to be unhappy about, if you're looking for a way to be hurt and have your feelings uh, turned inside out, well, I guarantee you'll find that also. If you're looking for a way to be a victim, you can find that. Uh, the, the television will teach you how to do that. Every major news channel out there will give you ample instruction and examples how to do it. But anyways, let's get back to, to the Bible here. Um, Ask and it shall be given you. Seek and you shall find. Knock and it shall be opened for you, uh, opened unto you. For everyone that asketh receiveth. Well, that sounds like another guarantee, another promise that's very much linked to prayer. Uh, and he that seeketh findeth. And to him that knocketh, it shall be opened. Verse 9, Or what man is there of you? Whom, if his son asks bread, will he give him a stone? Or if he asks a fish, will he give him a serpent? If ye then, being evil, know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your Father, which is in heaven, give good things to them that ask him? And then interesting, connected to these statements of prayer, it says, therefore... All things whatsoever ye would that men should do to you, 
do ye even so to them? For this is the law and the prophets. I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time on that right now, but that's an interesting thing to look into, that God associates that with prayer and us getting our prayers answered. I want to, I want to go back to the word desire in the book of Mark. That word desire, I, I underlined that in one of my other Bibles, and out in the margin I wrote, how much do you want it? And there's some things... And we, we kind of talked about this in our Sunday school teachers class tonight. There's some things that people, and you know, when we think about our relationship with God, God always refers to us as children. And so we can learn a lot about our relationship with God from our own relationship with our children. And anybody that, that has children will understand this and that there's things your children will ask for and they don't really want it. And there was, a, uh, there was times where I asked for certain toys, and, and I didn't get them. Friends of mine got them, and I, at the time when I didn't get them, I, I'll tell you the truth, I felt slighted. I wanted, or I thought I was convinced by the commercial that that was the toy that I wanted. That's interesting, all these commercials show these toys doing extraordinary things, and at the bottom of the screen, in very fine print, it says... Uh, these toys don't really do these things. And they're, they're putting that fine print on the screen for children who don't know how to read. <laughs> and no, this Lego rocket doesn't actually fly to outer space. And, and well, the, the kids, they don't know how to read that. And they're not paying attention. They're not looking to read something on the screen. They're, wow, look at that one flies. Uh, that one burrows underground and comes up and knows right where to come out and and then uh, all the soldiers can follow through that tunnel and make it, and all these extraordinary things. I wanted certain toys. Now, what I found out a lot of times is some of my friends did get those toys. And that, when I first heard that, oh, man, I'm even more slighted. Everybody else got one of those for Christmas, or everybody else is getting one of those for their birthday. And then sometimes I would get to play with the one that they got. We'll call it a, a whatchamacallit. So they got the whatchamacallit. I didn't get it, but I got to go over to their house and play. And, uh, uh, hey, didn't you get a whatchamacallit for Christmas? Yeah, can I play with it? Sure. And they dig through and get it out, and I'd play with it, and I'd realize this is not as extraordinary as it was shown to be on the TV and I'm kind of glad I got what I got instead of what I had asked for. But that word desire, and, and, and really what I wanted, what I had asked for, was just a fantasy. It was not, it was not reality. That word desire means to beg, it means to call for, it means to ask, it means to crave. And, and back in the, in the days, way, we'll go, we'll hop in the way back machine and go back to the days when, when Sears put out a, a Christmas catalog called the Wish Book. And I remember Jared going through and sitting on my lap and just flipping page after page and saying, I want that and that and that and that and that. And I started calling it the that and that book. Uh, and they no longer provide that in that book. They have online service, and I think there's still 16 stores nationwide, or maybe even worldwide, that are still open somewhere. None of them around here. Um, but they had that that in that book, and and he was going on and on, and he was pointing at every single picture on the page, and then flipping the page and going through the same on the next two pages, and then he flipped the page and go through, and and finally I said, well, what is that one? And he said, I don't know. I don't, what does it do? What does that toy do? I don't know. I don't know what it does. Was that something he desired? When we look at the, the biblical word desire there, was that something that he would beg for, call for, ask for, that he craved? He didn't even know what it was. He didn't know what it did. He didn't even know if it was something that would be fun and entertaining that was at his age level uh, that he would enjoy or not. 
And so that's, uh, we, we have a misunderstanding, I think, of the word desire. There's things that we may think we want, and we, we have fallen in love with the idea of something, but sometimes that idea does not match the reality of it. So let's come back to Matthew 7, and, and we see a, a, another series of promises here. Now, was in my other Bible where I had that written out in the margin, I had uh, a cross-reference that I'd written in, Matthew 7, 7. And it's interesting, as, as I looked through and, and, uh, and then I came back to Matthew 7, 7, I said, well, there's three things that are mentioned there in that verse. Ask, seek, and knock. And I got to think about those, and, and, and I asked God, is there more to this than what I've seen before? And I believe there is. Ask, and it shall be given you. Seek, and ye shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. I want, to, I want us to look at this. First of all, ask. Obviously, we involve God. The first thing we do is we ask God. God, there's something that I'd like to have. I want, I want that. I want a Ferrari. Even I know it's made in Italy, but I want one of those so I can sell it and buy something that I really want, or two or three of what I really want, <laughs> so I can sell, buy what I really want, pay off my house, and go pay cash for another house. Uh, but uh, anyhow, I, I could say this is so. We involve God. We ask God. We ask God, and it might be something. God, this is something I'd like to have at work. And it might be something we say, I think I could do my job better if I had, maybe it's a new set of tools, maybe it's a different, uh, uh, a new piece of equipment or, or an upgrade or something, or a better shift or, or whatever, a, a better rate of pay. I think I'd be more productive if, if I was making another $2 an hour. I think I'd break even on my grocery bill this year compared to last year if I got that much of a raise. But uh, uh, and, and so we, we start out, and, and when it says ask here, I'm going to say, first of all, involve God. Involve God. Ask God. Now, it may be that that's not where we should stop. That's definitely where we should start. But sometimes we need to go beyond that and there's more asking that needs to be done. So if I need something to do my job better at work, first of all, I'm going to ask God. I'm going to say, God, let, let's just say I need a new truck because my truck's broken down and, and it's just uh, uh, in the shop every week. And, and that's just, uh, hey, I, I'm, I'm spending more time waiting for my truck to be fixed than I am actually out there and, and doing work in it. So, God, I could use a new truck at work or at least a new to us, a newer or more reliable uh Piece of equipment. And, and so I've, I've involved God. Now, the next thing, I don't need to stop asking there. I need to go to my boss and say, Boss, I really need a new truck. Or a newer truck or a more reliable truck. That's what I need. It, it doesn't say we're to stop asking. It, you know what? That's within, that's within my boss's power to then go to the owner or to go to the guy that's directly above him and him go to the owner and say, hey, we're in need of some updated equipment up here in our neck of the woods. But if I never ask him, if I never make that need known, then he's going to think, well, hey, everything's, everything must be going all right. He hasn't voiced a, a, a need or a request or anything like that. And, and I know there's some people that are going to abuse that, and every week they're going to be asking for something new and an upgrade and an update. And, and uh, 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 be careful about that. But if it's something that is that is truly desired, you first of all ask, and I'm saying that is first involve God, but I'm not saying that that's where it needs to stop. It might be that you need to start asking other people as well. God, I want my children to be better behaved. So I need to ask God, help my children be better behaved. But then I, I maybe I should ask my kids, hey, would you be better behaved? <laughs> Would you be better behaved, please? Would you start saying please and thank you? And, and uh, 
uh, being a little more considerate, whatever it is that we're wanting, that we're desiring. Ask, involve God, ask God. And it may be that you need to go on and ask others. Next is the word seek. Seek. Now, as, as I was saying this, I see the word ask, and I think, well, what? The very first thing that comes to mind, this is a, a passage regarding prayer. I'm going to ask God. And then seek. Involve yourself. So not just, I'm going to ask God. All right, God. It's that ball's entire. You're going to do it all. Well, it might be that I need to get involved. It might be something that I can put my hand to and fix the situation and fix the problem. It might be something that I can, I can seek out a solution and present a... You know, bosses are, are happy when people present solutions to them. And, that you know, so often all they get is a complaint, a problem. Here's a problem that I've identified. Here's a problem that I've identified. Here's a problem that I've identified. I had a problem at work Friday. And that became a problem Saturday as well. And before I left work Friday, I told a co-worker, I said, please help me remember, I think I've identified a solution to this recurring problem that we're facing. Help me remember to mention that to the boss Monday. I said, maybe between the two of us, you'll remember to remind me <laughs> to give him the solution to that problem. And, and, and so, uh, involve yourself. I'm the one that's seeking I'm the one that's searching. And again, that means I have to be careful what direction I, di uh, I direct my search in. Am I searching for more problems or am I searching for solutions? Am I searching for a way to fix this? Am I searching for a way to make it better? Or am I just searching for, you know, some people just searching for a way to complain. I, I, I know people that way. Everybody knows somebody that way. Right? The name probably came to your mind or a face. You pictured somebody right there. And I said, some people just looking for a way to complain. They are. Dad used to say, that, that fellow would complain if you hung him with a new rope. If you bought a brand new rope to hang with which to hang him, he'd still complain. Uh, and, and if you used an old rope, well, that thing's chafing really bad. What is it? It's all greasy and dirty. And, 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 uh, and so you buy a new one for him, and he's still going to find something to complain about. But, the, you know, there's some people, man, they, they get the best position, they get the best everything, and then they complain. Well, I'm not getting that. But would you like that? Well, I'm not getting it. Well, come on over, and here's what you need to do to get that. Well, I don't want to do that. Well, then... I mean, that's yours for the taking. You just have to do what it takes to get it. No, I'm just, I'd rather stand here and complain about not having it. <laughs> well, you not having it is nobody else's fault. You just have to go over and pick it up. Huh. Probably weighs a ton. <laughs> Somebody else picked it up to put it there. If you would ask them to help you, they probably would. You're the one in control of the seeking. Now, you can ask God to help you as you seek and direct you and guide you, but this is something that you are actively involved in yourself. First of all, involve God. Ask. Second of all, involve yourself. Seek. Now, this next one, I, I thought this was interesting as I was looking at this. Knock. Well, I'm not going to knock on my own door. That'd be crazy. Knocking implies you're knocking on somebody else's door. This might be involving somebody else. So you involve God first, you involve yourself, and then don't be afraid to involve others. It would be silly for me to knock on my own door. <laughs> Although there have been times when I locked myself out and I said, Dear Lord, please let somebody else be home right now. And I knocked on the door and the, the dog barked. Uh, and uh, nobody's home. So I had to find uh, an alternative. I had to seek a different way into the house. <laughs> and so, uh, and, and I was able to find it. Uh, but uh, ask, you involve God. Seek, make sure you involve yourself. No, I'm just going to let God take care of all this. No, no, no. You involve yourself. Not, it may be that you need to involve somebody else. Oh, I hate to ask for somebody else for favor. You know, Sometimes other people 
the need that they have at that point in time, their need is for somebody to come and ask them for help. That's good. And we rob them of that. We rob them of that opportunity. We rob them of having that need met by failing to ask because of our own pride. Well, I, I, I don't want to ask. I don't want to bother them. I don't want to be put out. I don't want them to know that I can't handle this all by myself. It might just be that they need to feel needed right now. And you're keeping that from them. You know, a lot of people, they'll turn down somebody trying to be kind to them, give them a gift and everything. And, and um, I've gotten to the point where, where I, will, I will tell the person, you don't have to do that, that's not necessary, once. And that gave them an honest out. If, if, I mean, they, they wanted to hand me $20 and really they didn't feel like they really had that $20, but somehow inside they felt obligated and need to give him this $20. And I'll say, hey, listen, you don't need to do that. Uh, oh, thank you. I didn't know how I was going to keep my electric on this month. Well, you put that $20 towards it, you know. Uh, you don't have to do that. Or after I've told them no once, they say, no, really, you need to take this. All right, you had your chance. You had your opportunity. Hand it over. <laughs> I don't ever say that. But, uh, but, but, but that's, you know, that's an opportunity for them to be a blessing to somebody else. And my mom taught me that. She said, you know, don't rob somebody of an opportunity to be a blessing for God to use them because now God is in a position where he's obligated to bless them for having been a blessing to somebody else. And, and so our pride sometimes gets in the way. Uh, get the pride out of the way and be willing to involve somebody else. Now, Let's look at verses 9 and 10. Or what man is there of you whom, if his son asks bread, will he give him a stone? Or if he asks a fish, will he give him a serpent? If ye then, being evil, know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your Father, which is in heaven, give good things to them that ask him? I'm going to go a little bit different direction. Now, this is almost like two messages or two Bible studies all in one. In Mark, we're told, if you ask and you... you Whatever you desire, if you ask believing, you're going to get it. Let me reverse the way this is worded here. I'm not trying to change the, the meaning of it. I'm just going to take this and, and swap some words around. And I believe we'll see it, it's a clear Bible truth. I'm just going to twist all the scriptures tonight, and, but you'll see what, what's being done. Let me, let me reverse this. I'm not necessarily changing what it says. I'm digging in there to get a nugget out for us to benefit from. Let, let, me, let me word it this way, and it's, What man is there of you if his son asks for a stone for food? Will he not give him bread instead? That's not what the Bible says here. It says, how many of you are, and I'm just going to paraphrase it, how many of you men are wicked enough, if your son asks you for some bread, you're going to give him a rock to eat? He says, none of you are that wicked. He says, or if he asks for a, 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 a filet of fish sandwich, and you're going to give him a poisonous or a venomous snake instead. He says, none of you are that wicked. So then we get to verse 11. He says, if ye then being evil, meaning you're, we're all sinful, if ye then being evil know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your Father which is in heaven give good things to them that ask him? Even, and, and the, the truth that's there is if our kids come to us and they ask us for something that we know is not good for them, we will instead give them something that is good for them. How many times we've all gone to our parents and asked for something that really they knew that's not going to help them. That's not going to give them the joy that they think they're going to get from that. That's not going to give them the satisfaction that they think they're going to receive from that. That's not going to give them the fun and entertainment that they think they're going to get from that. They're going to have more fun with the box from that toy if they get that toy. I have something else in mind, and they try to give us something better. 
And it may not be what we ask for, but listen, what it says here is that how much more shall your Father which is in heaven give good things to them that ask Him? Well, I asked for that Ferrari, and I didn't get it. Instead, I just got this pickup truck. Well, and then what happened? Well, then the refrigerator went out, and I don't know how I would have strapped that thing on top of a Ferrari and gotten it home. <laughs> and I don't know how I would have kept my foot off the gas pedal on that Ferrari, and I'd had my license revoked by now, and the car towed away, and, and all, all manner of problems. You know what? God gave me better. And I never asked for a Ferrari. I, they're neat looking on TV, and with somebody else, uh, I have... Zero interest in that, to be honest with you. Not until I'm old and retired and get one where the blinker is stuck on. And then uh, that's the one I want. So God gave me better. God gave me better. I told somebody at work, I said, I think I'm going to be selling this thing pretty soon. I told him what was the things that it had wrong with it. It's got 260-some thousand miles on it. and I've put a good portion of those miles on it. And he said, well, what are you asking? What are you thinking about asking for? And I told him, I said, oh, probably about this amount. The next day at work, he said, you may want to look that over again. And he showed me people that were selling very, very similar trucks, very, very similar mileage, and they were asking double what I had had in mind. And I said, that's what I paid for the truck to begin with. <laughs> so... Nobody keeps a Ferrari, puts that many miles on it, and sells it for what they paid for it several years later. God gave me better. Even if I had asked for a Ferrari, He gave me better. And so listen, when, when your kids, He said, if they ask for a, a rock for lunch, you're not going to give them a rock. You're going to give them better. You're going to give them bread. Obviously, if they ask for bread, you're not going to give them a rock. You're going to give them bread. If they ask for a fish, uh, fish you're not going to give them a serpent. You're going to give them something that, that's, that's better than a serpent. God always answers. And God always gives better. And so we look at that verse in Mark and we say, well, I asked and I desired and I really craved and I really wanted and I... I, I and this was something that I, that I had my heart set on and I asked God for it and I didn't get it. I didn't get it. God just doesn't answer my prayers. No, God always answers your prayers. But what He does is He answers them better. And so sometimes the difference is so great, we don't notice it. We don't recognize it as an answered prayer. One, one other thing that happens, and we won't turn there right now, but the Bible teaches that, that we don't know really what, what to pray for. We really don't. When, when it comes to prayer, we're like three-year-olds. That's, that, that's really what you ask. If you, hey, what do you want? Chocolate cake. <laughs> want chocolate cake. Now, what, what do you want for lunch? The ice cream. <laughs> and then for dessert, chocolate cake. <laughs> now, what do you want for supper? Well, chocolate cake with a side of ice cream. <laughs> You know, that's, that's the sense that they have. That's the sense that we all had at that age. And so what happens is we get that request, I'm hungry! Well, what would you like? You have ice cream? Well, we have ice cream, but you're not getting that for lunch. <clears throat> I was told the kids, you got to eat the nasty stuff before you get the good stuff. <laughs> and so... What do you want? Well, I want ice cream. I understand years, I mean, a long time ago, the wealthiest man in the world died of malnutrition because he locked himself in a room and all he wanted to eat was chocolate cake. Wealthiest man. Could have had anything he wanted, but he didn't have anybody to stand up and say, I'm going to give you better than what you're asking for. God always gives us better than what we're asking for. A proper parent 
and he was old enough, he, his parents were not in, in control of his life, but a proper parent will look at that three-year-old child and say, how about, how about I make you a sandwich, or how about I make you something that has a little bit more nutritional value? How about we have some, uh, some meatloaf, mashed potatoes, and carrots, or something, you know, that uh, we're going to have, we're going to have a more balanced meal, and then if you're still hungry after you've, you've eaten, maybe we can have some chocolate cake. But that's not going to be the main thing, and you're not going to live on that because you can't live on that. And so the parent is giving that child more, and that child may say, I want a chocolate cake. All I got was roast beef and potatoes and carrots and peas and corn. I never got my chocolate cake. Well, guess what? You have a mom that loves you. You have a dad that cares about you. And they gave you more. They gave you better. How much more, the Bible says, child your father in heaven. How much more will he give good things? Every good and perfect gift cometh from above. And so when we pray, what happens with that prayer is, and I got started on this and didn't make it, got distracted. The Holy Spirit comes and takes that prayer and He rewrites it and delivers it to God. And so He takes the nonsense that a two-year-old, and so it's kind of like the, the two or three-year-old saying to an older sibling, I'm hungry, I want chocolate cake. And the older sibling just going to the parent saying, Little brother is hungry and is, is wants some lunch. Mm -hmm. Oh, well, I've got lunch being prepared right now. And so the, 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 the young child comes and says, I'm hungry. All right, we'll sit up there at the table. I'm getting ready to put it on the table now. I'm going to give you just what you asked for. It is not what I asked for. I want a chocolate cake. <laughs> but see, there was a go-between that interpreted it and changed it to what it should have been, knowing mom's not going to give you chocolate cake. I've been down that road before. <laughs> Mom, Bubby is ready for lunch. He's hungry. I'll go call him, bring him to the table. I've got it ready right here. And so the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit interprets our prayers and presents them to God. You know, the, the best way to recognize your prayer being answered is find out what God already wants to do and ask Him to do that. And have your prayer lined up with God's will already. You see, most of our prayer time is us trying to get God to change His will to conform to ours. And so a lot of children spend time and energy that's wasted in a tantrum trying to get the parents' will to conform to theirs for them to get what they think they want, what they've been convinced that they want, perhaps by an outside influence. Well, I remember when people were going to war a few years back over that Tickle Me Elmo nonsense. And, and I mean, there was violence going on in the Walmarts and, and, and other stores that carried them. And, and I mean, people going to the hospital and things like that. And... Where are those things now? You know, if they were that good, they'd still be selling that same thing. It was just a flash. It was just a marketing campaign that convinced people this is what they needed and this is what they should have and this is, this is what's good for them. And parents fell into that and some went to jail, some went to court, some went to the hospital, some, you know, all that that, that took place because... They gave in to the will and want and desire and tantrum of a child. I don't want my God to give in to a tantrum and a want and desire that I don't have enough sense to know what to ask for. I'm thankful there's a Holy Spirit that goes in between and says, here's what he's, here's what he's asking. Amen. I, Lord, I need a raise. And the Holy Spirit says he needs out of that place. God, let's get him fired. <laughs> I asked for a raise and I got fired. forced me to ask God, where do you want me to go? Mm -hmm. 
God, what, what direction do you want me to go? I'm going to start seeking. Guide my seeking. I'm going to start knocking and involving you, involving me, and involving somebody else. Hey, would you give me a job? Nope. Yeah, I'll give you a job. You've got to work Sundays. Nope. Yeah, I'll give you a job. You've got to do this. You've got to do that. You've got you to sacrifice your family and come make us first. Nope. Don't find out about a job that I could probably learn to do and in a few years be making 80 to $90 an hour. But I'd be gone from my family a lot of those times. Ah, it's not worth it. I didn't get married so I could be gone from my wife. That's right. So I could be gone somewhere and buy her a bigger house that I'm never going to be in. <laughs> <laughs> that's not that's not the reason I I, I I I asked her to marry me. Now if I wasn't married, didn't have any family to be around, that might be an ideal situation. If I could get Sundays off to be in church on Wednesday nights, that yeah, that'd be fine. But God will move you. And sometimes it seems like, man, I, I prayed for something and got the exact opposite. I just don't think God's answering prayer. No, God always answers. He said He does, so we know He does. If there's a failure, it's on our end of recognizing that prayer being answered. Let's stand tonight. Every head bowed. Every head closed. We'll just have, let Ms. Weaver stay in the back, and we'll just have a silent invitation out front here. I want to I want to go back to the beginning of the message when we begin to pray. I want to reiterate, involve God. You have a desire, you have a need, and, and we ought not to confuse needs with desires, but whatever the case is, there's something you're going to ask God for. First of all, ask, involve God. Seek, involve yourself, and knock. And maybe you have to involve others. Involve others. Our Heavenly Father, bless this invitation. Help us to have learned something about prayer. Help us to align our prayers with your will more closely and, and we'll notice our prayers being answered. God, we thank you for being a God that loves us and doesn't give us uh, what we ask for according to our own whims, but rather according to our needs and what is actually good and best for us. Lord, we pray that uh, you'd help us to see that being the case. Give us the discernment and wisdom and the gratitude for it. For we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. God's spoken to you. You've been praying and it just seems like the prayer's not being answered. It is. It is. You know, sometimes the answer is no. I'm not going to give you that. I'm going to give you something else that's better for you. Sometimes the answer is you need to wait. It's not a no. It's just a, not right now. Not right now. Heavenly Father, as we leave here tonight, we leave here thanking you for all the times you've watched over us, all the other times we've left, and you've taken us back home in safety. God, we recognize your guidance and, and involvement in that. God, we pray that as we as we come across things, maybe that we want or maybe that we, we need, we would first involve you, but also we would we would involve ourselves and then others as you would have us. We ask and pray that you'll use us this week to point others to Christ, that they may also involve you in their lives and, and come to know you as their Savior. And then God, return us again at the appointed hour for the next scheduled service. We pray that you'll bless it with your presence, with your power, and may your Holy Spirit already prepare our hearts for the, the, the lesson in the Bible study that we'll hear. For we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Lord bless you.